three things to like about the Nano X1. So this is called the shoe of fitness. So what are some things to like about it? Number one is it's pretty lightweight and maneuverable compared to other cross trainers on the market right now that are a bit more like CrossFit centric and a bit heavier in nature. This shoe is pretty lightweight, maneuvers really well. The outer is decently flexible, form fits really well to the foot and it doesn't feel over encumbering on the foot. The second thing I like about this model is how responsive the midsole is. So it has float ride energy and midsole tech in there. So it is very responsive for plyos and different movements like sprints, jumps and whatnot. So if you are somebody who wants a shoe to kind of accommodate and absorb landings pretty well, this is a decent model to do so in. The third thing I like about this model is that it's comfortable to wear on a day to day. The heel to toe is a little bit higher than previous nano models. The midsole again is a little bit more accommodating and reactive. So it is nice to wear for longer durations, especially if you're going on longer walks or wearing them for work. But let's dive into the cons and also discuss why some of those pros are actually cons in the context of CrossFit and more serious lifting. All right, so some cons that come along with this model is number one. We talk about how reactive the midsole is, but we have to remember with training shoes specifically, especially ones designed for heavier lifting, anytime we have a midsole that seems to have a little bit more give and reactivity to it, we're gonna lose out on some stability in heavier lifts. So if you are somebody who wants a pair of training shoes for going heavy in, for testing your 1RM, for supporting your foot to the fullest ability and really gripping the floor, this might not be the best model for you. I would actually recommend looking at the Nano 9 or 10 if you're sold on the Nano model line. I've actually done a review on both of those shoes. I'm gonna link that up there. The second thing that I'm not the biggest fan of with this model is just how deep this boot is back here. If you're not wearing longer socks, I'm gonna tell you now, be warned because you are gonna tear up your heel for the first couple wears, especially when breaking these puppies in. This heel cup back here digs into the ankle and Achilles, so be warned that if you are gonna rock this pair and wear lower socks, you're gonna to have to break these puppies in because it's gonna tear up your Achilles a little bit. But overall, those are the major cons with this model. I think a lot of folks got this shoe thinking that it's gonna be just like the other Nano models. So if you pay attention to the marketing around this shoe, it kind of bleeds in and gives you hints as to what to expect. So if you look on the site, you see reviews saying, oh, this shoe is not as stable as the other Nanos. Well, yeah, they didn't really market it as a gung-ho CrossFit model. They don't say it's gonna be the most stable. They say it's the shoe of fitness. It's gonna accommodate a variety of needs. And honestly, it's what the shoe does. It's not the best for stability. It's not the best for heavy lifting. But if you go into this model understanding that, then I think it's a decent shoe all around. All right, so we talked pros, we talked cons. Now let's talk about performance because I think that's an area that most folks are interested in with this model. So I'm gonna break it down into three different sections. Number one, more serious slash heavy lifting. Number two, we're gonna talk about more of like our plyometric or lighter run workouts. Number three, we'll talk about just kind of like general fitness workouts, nothing too crazy when it comes to loading. So from a heavy lifting standpoint, I mentioned this in the cons, but this is not gonna be your best bet. And I would say if you are interested in other nanos, go to literally any other model besides this one. If you're interested in full on stability and support under heavy weight, this shoe does okay at supporting some movements, but I think if you go into this model expecting it to be just like the 10, just like the nine, just like the eight or any of the more stable nano options, you're gonna be disappointed. Number two is plyometrics and lighter runs. So overall, I'm actually a fan of this shoe for that type of activity. This is a very lightweight shoe. It's very reactive. It feels light on the foot when we're doing jumps, when we're doing sprints, when we're doing other agility focused movements. So if you are somebody who likes to train like that, then I think actually this shoe is gonna be a really good fit for you because of its new lightweight texture and just how maneuverable it is, it feels really good in those types of workouts. But I will circle back and say that when you are jumping and when you are running, you're gonna have a lot of Achilles friction. Wear longer socks, just do yourself a favor and that way you don't have to come back to the video and yell at me for having a cut up heel. Number three is just general fitness workouts. So this could be anything like a class, or lighter movements, so like let's call like lighter dumbbell lunges or anything where we're not loading too heavily. This shoe does its job pretty dang well. The cup back here is pretty stable in the heel, flattish outsole. Um, it does have a higher heel to toe than previous models, but it's not really the biggest deal in my opinion when it comes to shifting performance. At least a couple millimeters won't really make a difference in the long run for a lot of activities that would fall kind of into that general fitness umbrella. So from a general fitness standpoint, if you just wanna wear a shoe on a day-to-day -day basis and then go rock it to the gym and you're not going super heavy, the shoe does a decent job. It's comfortable, it's lightweight, 
and it accommodates some loading. It's just not the best for 1RMs, 2RMs, or really heavy lifting. So when it comes to sizing and fit for this model, I think you should be pretty safe going true to size. Similar to other Nanos, I would say stay in the same size you rock in them. So if you wear a 10 in Nano 10s, for example, rock a 10 in the X1. I don't think there's a huge discrepancy in how the shoe physically fits compared to other shoes. Now I will say that if you are kind of pushing the upper end of your normal true to size, you may want to size up a half size, but overall, I think for the vast majority of lifters and just general fitness folks, if you go true to size, you should be safe. So when it comes to price for this model, you can expect to pay around $130 USD. That's fairly standard for every other Nano model when they hit the market. So 130 is probably a price you're used to. I will say that Reebok does have some pretty solid models out in the cross training category that are much more cost efficient. So like the Speed TR, the 9, the 10, those are all gonna be marked down a little bit, especially in some colorways. So if you're not down to pay $130 for this shoe and it doesn't really fit into the bucket of how you like to train, look at some of the other models because they're definitely gonna be much more cost efficient than the X1. All right, so now let's talk construction of the Reebok Nano X1. So we'll make our way up here from the toe back to the heel. So up here on the toe, we have an extended outsole that comes up. We also have a beefed up layer of material here. That's decent for durability. So if you're doing any toe dragging movements like burpees, that's always a good sign that this shoe is not gonna necessarily break down right away up here at the toe. On the upper, we have a knit, so it's decently breathable, decently maneuverable, has a little bit of stretch to it and form fits the foot really well. Um, some subtle Reebok branding on the medial and lateral sides. Then we have five initial eyelets going up and a sixth up here for some lace locking. The tongue itself is decently lightweight, decently breathable. It expands pretty well, so it doesn't really get sucked into the side because it is a decent tongue when it comes to just having a good amount of width that it stays pretty put on the foot when you are doing your workouts. Uh, making our way back here to the heel, we have a heel clip that comes up. They kind of got rid of that full like kind of plastic heel over here. It's not nearly as stable as the previous models. As you can see here, there's a little bit more give to it. It's just a little bit of a different feeling compared to previous Nanos. I mentioned this in the cons. We do have a boot that comes up decently high back here on the heel. Back here on the heel, we have some Nano X1 branding. We have kind of a heel clip that comes all the way back down. And then making our way to the midsole, we have the Float Ride Energy midsole. As you can see, a lot more give compared to previous models. I can squeeze that pretty dang easily. And once again, that plays into why this shoe is not as stable as other Nano models. Making our way to the outsole. We have this more like reactive texture here. It grips really well. I actually really like this outsole's texture for more rubber surfaces. So if you're in your CrossFit box and you're trying to do more agility stuff, this is a decent outsole for really gripping the floor well. But other than that, guys, that's, that's mostly the gist of the construction of the shoe. It's relatively simple in nature. It is a lot different than the Nano 10. Again, I'm gonna link that review up here in the right corner. So if you are interested in other Nano models, Check that one out, especially if you are into serious lifting. And that wraps up my review of the Reebok Nano X1. So overall, this is a decent training shoe, but I will say, and I'm gonna reiterate once again, that if you are a serious CrossFit athlete or somebody who likes to go hard and heavy in their shoes, look at other Nano models or look at other cross trainers that are a bit more stable in nature. I don't want you to get this pair of shoes thinking it's gonna be just like the 9, 10, 8, 7, etc., and be bait and switch and then feel very disappointed in your purchase. But if you are somebody on the market for just more of a general fitness shoe that you can also wear on a day-to-day -day basis and you don't plan on going that heavy in it, then this is a decent model. We just have to understand the context, I think, behind the differences of this construction of the Nano X1 versus previous Nanos because then that can help us direct our buying decision with a bit more strategy. And as always, guys, if you have any questions on this model or other Nano models for that matter, drop them down below, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.